I'm sure that if President Trump was the president today, there would not be any war in the Ukraine or in Europe. Mr. President, come back, make America great again, bring us peace again. Those are the words of the one and only Viktor Orban, the amazing prime minister of Hungary. And that's just where it begins. Hey, gang, it's me, Dr. Steve. We're going to check in on CPAC Europe, the amazing gathering of the world's patriots in Budapest. And we're going to see what Tucker Carlson said, which is going to absolutely blow your mind. The patriot booming nation of Hungary is in the midst of hosting CPAC Europe, a gathering of the continent's leading nationalist right leaders, along with a number of notables from across the pond. The one and only Carrie Lake is there. She was featured in an interview on Hungarian television, and she did not disappoint. We need to show Americans that when we come together, we can climb out of the hole that Joe Biden has gotten us into, and other countries as well around the world. We need to have 190 plus strong countries in order to combat this globalism and countries with unique cultures, unique people and strong individuals. And I think that's going to happen if we follow the lead of Viktor Orban of the Donald Trumps of the world. But one of the highlights of the conference featured a pre-recorded message from Tucker Carlson, who's a huge fan of Viktor Orban. But what he said turned out to be eerily prophetic. Greetings to CPAC Hungary and to all you Americans in the audience. You are very brave. You have wound it up on one of Samantha Power's lists. The State Department is keeping track. You went to a forbidden country. I wish I was there in Budapest. If I ever get fired and have some time and can leave, I will be there with you. But in the meantime, Godspeed. We are thinking of you and cheering you on. What if I told you there was a small group of investors who wildly outperformed the market? Well, there is, and you know exactly who they are. Corrupt politicians like Nancy Pelosi and establishment senators who've been using their security clearances and exclusive knowledge to their advantage in the market for decades now. They know when sales are up. They know when earnings are going to be. They know about legislation, incoming Fed changes, and a whole host of other inside baseball tips that gives them an unfair advantage when picking stocks. When these big wigs make moves, odds are they know something's up. But thanks to a little-known SEC database, guess what? We can see what and when these people are buying. Not only do we get to see it in real time, but we get to piggyback on their trades to gain the same advantage for ourselves perfectly legally and ethically. My friend Ross Givens has been tracking insider trading for years and his recommendations have led to investment returns of over 200%. Some have hit as high as nearly 1,500%. And according to him, there's no better way to beat the market. And now it's your turn. Click on that link below right now and learn how you too can learn to trade like Pelosi. Click on that link and learn how to gain an insider advantage for yourself today. Now, what's happening in Hungary is astonishing. If you don't know, back in the fall of last year, just a few months back, conservative patriot Prime Minister Viktor Orban won re-election in a massive landslide victory. Now, if you can believe it, it was Orban's fourth consecutive landslide win. It was absolutely devastating blow to the bullies in Brussels. Leaders from the European Union, they hate Orban. So they put together, get this, a six-party opposition alliance against him to topple him once and for all. Orban's Fidesz party, which is the Nationalist Populist Party of Hungary, they had to face a mass coalition of six liberal parties backed by Brussels. And they went down in flames. They got a humiliating 34% of the vote. That's it. Orban absolutely crushed them. And what Orban has been doing is he's been using this cultural conservative mandate to basically rebuild Christian Europe. The revitalization of conservative Western civilization is at the heart of his political project. And he's been working very closely with the conservative Christian Law and Justice Party in Poland, which is their majority party, to do just that in Central Europe. And so Hungary has become ground zero for the growing Christian nationalist movements awakening all throughout the West. Just to give you a taste of that, 
Here's the prime minister of the nation of Georgia, which is going through its own extraordinary Christian renaissance. Check this out. For freedoms, for example, through LGBTQ plus propaganda and attempts to legislate gender affirming procedures for children, bypassing their parents, as well as by forcing so-called innovations that would cut off people from their own roots, family, traditions, culture and history. They do so because it is easy to control a rootless person, someone who has forgotten his or her history and faith. Therefore, in such a difficult time, our main weapon and foundation is traditional Christian conservative family values. Even Now, dare I say it, is there anyone in the United States, any politician willing to talk like that? I mean, this is amazing stuff. You see, the key here is that if you're going to effectively fight the culture wars, you got to have a culture. You've got to have an alternative culture that's going to confront and indeed defeat the woke culture that's actively attempting to impose itself on us through force. This is precisely what was implied in Viktor Orban's speech, calling on Americans to re-elect Donald Trump. There's no one else in the United States who's willing to and able to stand up and challenge the globalist cabal like Trump. In the meantime, European leaders like Orban and the prime ministers of Poland and Georgia and Italy, they're all leading the way here. Listen to how the director general of Hungary explains the difference between conservatism and liberalism. This is absolutely profound. First of all, because conservatism, I think, is not an ideology. It's, a, it's rather a habit or a, a, a virtue, while most of those or all of those socialistic, progressive behaviors or uh, ideas like socialism, communism, and including progressive liberalism, those are ideologies. And ideologies usually become dogmas as well. But my point is that this whole debate about God, homeland, and family <clears throat> is not about ideology. It's about, uh, it's about common sense. It's about our uh, uh, everyday way of life. And That's beautiful. I mean, it's beautifully put. Conservatism, unlike progressive Marxist liberalism, is not an ideology. It's common sense. It's a way of life. It's literally a civilization, one that's flourished for over a thousand years precisely because it provides rich resources for sustainable identity. Again, where are we hearing anything like this in the United States? I'm so grateful for what's going on this week at CPAC Europe, and the leadership there is demonstrating to the world how to stand up for conservative patriotic values in the face of the ongoing but fledgling assaults from globalism. As always, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. You'll definitely want to check out my latest video on Taylor Swift crying over Republicans crushing liberals. It's going to make your day. Ah, liberal tears, liberal tears. Make sure to click on that link, and I'll see you over there. God bless.